Today I'm going to teach you all the basics of Premiere Pro in under 15 minutes. Let's go. So first up right here, once you load up Premiere Pro, you're going to see this screen. This is basically where you can see all your past projects. But if you're starting a new project, just create a new project. You can now go ahead and name your project. I'm going to call this new edit and then hit create. In this next page right here, you have the option to import like past footage, but I'm being honest, I really never use this. I just import it later. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit skip. And now we are inside the full main page of Premiere Pro. First up right here in the top left-hand corner is your effects and properties control. This is basically where you can like adjust the position, size, apply effects, all that stuff we'll get into later. Over here is the program monitor. This is where you'll obviously see your video. On the right-hand side right here, there's a bunch of different options but we have the effects panel. This is mainly where you just search for the effects that you wanna apply. And then also you can adjust your sound here as well. Um, now below this right here, we have the timeline and the sound audible decibel levels right here. But the timeline is basically where you're gonna be doing all your editing. Right next to that is the toolbar. This is where all your tools are. We'll get into all of these in just a bit. Last but not least on the bottom left-hand corner is the media library. And this is where you can import all your footage and clips. So we're gonna go ahead and import some footage right now. I'm gonna go over here to my finder and. I'm I'm going to select some footage of some clips that I shot from a concert last month and I'm simply just going to drag them and drop them over here to your media tab right here. Just like that, boom, all of our footage is imported. Now we can go ahead and start editing. Go ahead and select all of these by holding shift and I'm simply just going to drag them into my timeline and boom there we go i'm just gonna go ahead and first uh, hit this mute button so we can't hear the audio i'm gonna hit the plus key to zoom in on my timeline and minus key to zoom out of course and now you can see if we just play this out we have a bunch of different clips that we can now go ahead and mess around with editing so first up let's go ahead and go over some of these tools i'm gonna go over the very basic tools the ones that i use the most first up is obviously the cursor tool the cursor tool can allow you to select clips move them around just like that and also allows you to trim them. If you just hover in between the cuts between clips, you see this little red arrow icon and you can drag a clip to trim it down and drag another clip and it's pretty simple. I have my timeline on this little magnet icon right here and this basically means snap and timeline. If you unselect it, it basically allows you to move things around without snapping things together. But if you click the magnet, it basically just means everything will snap exactly to the last frame. So it's pretty helpful. Make sure you have that toggled on. Something I missed when I started off. My other favorite tool in the toolbar right here is the ripple edit tool now this one right here you just select it and what it basically does is it not only allows you to trim clips but it will snap it to the last clip so basically it saves you the time of having to trim a clip like this and then drag it together right after the ripple tool i also use the razor tool this is basically to cut clips very simple pretty much as described in the name and once you uh, like cut up clips, you can of course delete those portions or move those portions around. And then last but not least is the track select forward tool. And then there's also, if you hold the hold click on it, you can hit track select backwards. And basically what this does is track select forward. If you click, it will select everything on the timeline going to the right. And then if you switch back to the other one and do the other way, it'll select everything on the timeline going to the left. So basically this is really helpful. Let's say you just need to move the entire timeline just a little bit to add some space for another clip. You can do so with the track select tool. One last maybe honorable mention is the slip tool. I don't really use it that often, but basically what this is, is let's say you trim a clip a little bit. It allows you to adjust the position or like the play head of that clip within that selected range. I don't really use it a lot. I'm not a fan of it, but if you want to use it and mess around with it, you can by all means go for it. Now, I intentionally set this up that right after I teach you the toolbars, I'm going to teach you keyboard shortcuts because this is also, again, something that I wish I had learned when I was starting off. You basically go to the top left-hand corner, click on Premiere Pro, and then it says keyboard shortcuts, like right under that, and click on that. And now this is going to open up a tab where you can see all the keys and what they basically do. Keyboard shortcuts, hotkeys, they save you so, so much time i only started using them like later while i was editing and i if i started earlier i would have saved like hundreds of hours i'm being dead serious so all those tools that i basically just showed you the ones that i use the most like for example the ripple edit i can just literally search ripple edit in here you can get a shortcut to pull it up on deck without having to click it so the shortcut for the actual key is b so if i hit the b key it'll pull up the ripple edit tool and also you can just do automatic ripple trim edits so i actually set mine up on my keyboard i have custom hotkeys so this is specific to me this ripple trim 
next edit. I have the W key set to that. And the ripple trim previous edit is the Q key. And basically what this allows me to do, I'll show you real quick, is if I'm on a clip right here and I hit W, it will trim it to the right. And if I hit Q, it will trim it to the left. And it basically saves me the entire time of not having to go click, hit this ripple edit, and then trim it like that. Make sure you learn these hotkeys and get them down early on because the sooner you do so, the more time you're gonna be saving. So throughout the rest of this video, I have a couple other methods and tricks I'm gonna be teaching you that I all have hotkeys and keyboard shortcuts set up for. So if you wanna go ahead and set those up after, I definitely recommend doing so. Next, we're gonna move on to text and motion graphic templates. Text tool right here, you might've seen it below. Pretty obvious, you select the text tool and you just click on your video right here. And now you can type like whatever you want, like your name. There you go, I type my name and now I can basically go ahead and edit this in the effects panel right here, the properties panel, which they just updated and changed in 2025. So if you watch any previous tutorials before 2024, 2025, kind of be a different setup and layout. So that's why I'm kind of making this video. You're gonna see your text right here in the left-hand corner. If you hit the drop down right here on the text, you're gonna be able to see the font, the weight of the font. You can make it bold, italics, whatever you want. And then of course you can change the font size. I'm first gonna change this font because I don't like that font, it's ugly. I'm gonna select the Minecraft font just because why not? And then we're just gonna scale it up just a little bit like that. And now what I can also do is I can just adjust the center line. And then if I scroll down even further, I can change the color to something like whatever I like. I'm gonna do my favorite color blue and hit okay. And I can then lastly change the position right here by scrolling down even further. And this is the X position and this is the Y position. And just like that, boom, there you go. Now I have my text, my name pop up in the video, just like that. Give me one second, let me make this look nice. Now that we got text down, I'm gonna really quickly highlight over the graphics templates and motion graphic templates. On the right hand side over here, if you click on graphics templates, you're gonna see a bunch of different previews of different animations. Now you have to pre-download these before, but there are a couple of basic ones that I believe Adobe has. What motion graphics templates are, are basically presets of pre-animated texts and graphics. So for example, on my website, I have a bunch of different cinematic title card templates that I can literally choose from by just simply taking these and dragging them and dropping them onto to my timeline. So basically that kind of just saves me the whole hassle of having to like make my own text, customize it, change the color and whatnot. All I literally have to do is I drag it in, drop it just like I did, go to the properties panel, hit the drop down on whatever text I wanna change and I can just adjust it like that. So you can see it's super easy if you use motion graphics templates. That also would have saved me so much time if I'd started using those earlier. We have a couple of cool templates linked below at our website. So if you wanna check it out, we'd appreciate it. Next, moving on to speed duration and stretching clips. Now this is a very, very important effect that you should also know. So let's just go ahead onto our timeline and select a clip that I wanna speed up or slow down. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click it, I'm going to scroll down over here to speed duration, and then I can just go ahead and change my speed duration to something slower, like let's say 60% speed. Hit okay or enter, and now you can see my clip is in slow motion. Another very important tool to know regarding speed duration is the stretch tool. So this is under the ripple edit tool, if you hold click on the ripple edit tool you'll see it brings a pop-up of four different other tools i like to click on the rate stretch tool so basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to speed up or slow down a clip to whatever given length if you don't know the percentage of how slow or fast you need to make it so let's say i need this clip to fill up this entire space right here i can just stretch it to do so just like that honestly looking pretty good too now of course you know this is a really short tutorial and there's a lot more in-depth courses which is why i'm happy to announce that this video is sponsored by skillshare at first when skillshare reached out to me, I'm gonna be honest, I was a little bit skeptical. I'm not sure if they're gonna approve of me saying this, but here goes anyways. You guys know me, I only take on brand deals if I'm 100% certain that it's gonna be worth it for you guys, and also products that I personally use myself. Skillshare, for those of you who aren't familiar, is basically an online like learning platform where you can take a bunch of different classes on film, video editing, illustration, graphic design, entrepreneur stuff, productivity, and a bunch more topics. And funny enough, like way before Skillshare even reached out to me about making this video, I actually actually made my own Skillshare course called A Beginner's Guide to How to Shoot Music Videos with No Budget. Honestly, me and my friends poured a lot of time and effort into making that course. It's a course that I'm really proud of. And if you wanna keep learning more and more about Premiere Pro and the more advanced techniques, you should definitely check out this course because we use Premiere throughout the entirety of the curriculum. And since this video is all about learning the basics of Premiere Pro, I love how Skillshare breaks all their courses into like a step-by-step -step process. So it's really super easy to learn. There's that like general rule of thumb by uh, Malcolm Gladwell, I believe, where it's like it takes 10 
10,000 hours to master a skill. And Skillshare definitely implements this throughout their courses because a lot of them have practice sheets, activities, group communities where you can actually talk with the teachers and others in that exact same class. Overall, just makes it really, really interactive and honestly feels like you're actually taking a real in-person class, but online. And then also outside of video production and video editing, there's also a bunch of other courses on a wide range of topic, productivity, some on cooking, even for some of you who are interested in starting a YouTube channel, because I know a lot of video editors who are interested in doing that. There's courses on how to successfully run a YouTube channel. I also took another course by Jordi at Cinecom, which was the secrets to growing a successful YouTube channel in 2023. This was honestly a really great course. I love this and it really helped me like set up the building stones of how to build and grow my channel. Also, once again, thanks to Skillshare for that. I 100% believe that creativity is a muscle that we should exercise and practice if we want to grow and improve on. And Skillshare is like the gym for that creative muscle. So if you're interested, the first 500 people who use the link below will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. Once again, completely for free. So whether you want to keep learning more about Premiere Pro, video editing, or just another topic in general, Skillshare is definitely the route to go. With it, you can check out a beginner's guide to shooting music videos with no budget and a bunch more other crazy courses. Now let's get to the next Premiere Pro tip. Relating to audio, it's pretty simple. What I like to do is I just like to adjust this right here and you can see your decibel levels. Negative six decibels is a good range where you want your audio levels to be. So if your clip is too high, you can just basically go ahead and drag down on that little audio level and drag it down to around negative six ish. Now our clip is at a nice negative six decibels. Another panel that I like to use relating to audio is the essential sound panel. And that's right here on this right hand side. If you click on that, this basically allows you to adjust things like dialogue, music and sound effects. Also, they just added a new A AI audio enhancer, which I think is really, really cool. If you go ahead and click on dialogue, it allows you cl to click this button AI enhance and it will just silence everything else out and only leave the audio. Also another cool audio trick is this blending like cross dissolve effect. You can see these little square icons right here and the audio levels and if you basically drag that it will blend the audio from one clip to another so that you have a smooth transition in audio. Next up we're going to be going over nesting and adjustment layers. So let's say I have all these clips right here and I want them to be all in one layer. All I literally have to do is select them, right click them and then I scroll down over here to where it says nest and then I can name this to whatever I want it to be. I'll just call this clip and hit OK. And now you can see all those clips are one entire long clip. And I can basically apply every effect that I did for to this one layer. Like let's say for example, the rate stretch tool and I can just trim this down and now all these clips are really fast. And if I wanted to change the audio levels of all of them, I can do so by just turning it all down. And just like that, we have all of our clips together in one layer. This also brings us to adjustment layers and color grading, which we'll really quickly go over. I'm gonna click this little new icons item and I'm going to hit new adjustment layer and basically it's going to ask us if these are the correct settings hit okay and now you can see our adjustment layer is in our library I'm going to drag this right here to our clip and basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to apply other effects to your clips without having them directly applied to the clip itself so I'm going to go to my Lumetri color tab right here which is also right under our essential sound and let's say I want to apply a color grading LUT to this uh, sin space like that and then I also want to increase the exposure a little bit of all these clips. And now you can see all these clips are color graded without us having to like actually apply the color grade to all these clips themselves. The Lumetri color tab also allows you to increase the temperature, make it like warmer. You can also adjust the tint and stuff like that. And just a bunch of other color controls, which I definitely recommend you learn a lot more about in a more in-depth tutorial. But and now last but not least, you finished your edit. We're going to go ahead and export them. To do this, all you have to do is go to the top left hand corner and we're going to click the export button now first up you're just going to go ahead and make sure you name your clip click the file location make sure this is going to the correct file hit save once you've named your file make sure your format is correct i always recommend going with just h.264 just a really good format to go with next up you're gonna hit the drop down on video and change it to 720 whatever you need also frame rate right here uncheck this to change this if you want to make it like 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second and then last but not least if you want to export only specific select sections you can go ahead and click these in and out buttons right here just like that and that will just export only portions of your edit but if you don't want to do that you can just go ahead and change the range to entire source and it'll export the entire timeline into one video and after that just go ahead and hit export and you are done congratulations you now got the basics of premiere pro down if you have any questions or suggestions feel free to leave a comment down below i'd love to hear what you guys have to say and of course if you want to learn any more there's a bunch more skillshare courses our skillshare course on music video production is linked below as well so if you want to check that 
it out. We definitely put a lot of time and effort into it. Once again, happy editing. And if you want to learn the basics of After Effects, I definitely recommend you checking out this video linked right here as well.